Hello, hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world watching this. We will get started in just one moment. Thank you for joining me today. And today we are going to talk about some very critical, important key information that everyone needs to know that was directly from USCIS as of yesterday. And I think it's critical that all of you have that information immediately. So not only I have the information, but all of you out there have the information too. So I want to share. So it's everyone is up to date on everything that's going on with the USCIS coming back open. Um, they have been open, but they have not been doing any in-person services except for emergency, excuse me, emergencies. And now they are open for actual services for non-emergency situations. So we're moving in the right direction. We're slowly getting back open again. So let's start. First of all, if any of you are new to me, new to this channel, my name is Andrea Shev. I'm an immigration attorney here in Los Angeles, California. I've been doing immigration for, gosh, almost 20 years. And I have this channel to get out really concise, easy to understand, straightforward information on all types of immigration issues going on. Um, I also do a lot of videos on just tips and pointers for different areas of immigration and really anything related to news flashes and news updates. So everyone on my channel has the up-to-date information that you need to be successful either with your current applications or applications that you're planning for in the future. So if you're not already subscribed, do it now, subscribe now and hit that like button and get those comments down below as this video progresses of any comments that you have please let me know. Um, I love answering comments. I love helping the community. So please put the comments, not only during the video on the side, but make sure you put those comments below after the video is published. Because once the video is published, I can't respond to those um, comments that are on the side that are going during the video. So if you have a question or you have something you need to tell me or tell everybody, or maybe something you need to share with everybody, please put that comment down below so after the video is published, so everybody has access to it, including me, so I can respond and it doesn't go poof and disappear once this video is actually published. Okay, so let's get started. So yesterday afternoon, there was a meeting with a bunch of people, including the USCIS, where they basically lay down a lot, a lot of new policies and procedures and everything that's going on with them now reopening to the public for interviews and all types of in-person services, biometrics, so on and so forth. So this live feed is going to talk about the latest, right off the press, um, key information that all of you need to know if you're dealing at all with USCIS now, or you're about to deal with them, or you're thinking of dealing with them in the future. So here we go. We're gonna talk about interviews for family-based adjustments. If you're applying for green cards with USCIS right now, based on a family relationship, we're going to talk about those. Naturalization interviews, oath ceremonies, all that kinds of stuff we're going to talk about. Interviews for employment-based um, applications. Going to talk about those also. Fingerprints, biometric appointments, rescheduling them, what's going on, how do I get my new fingerprint appointment if it was canceled, what happens. And oath ceremonies for people that are going through naturalization, either that they had an oath ceremony and it got canceled, or they have an oath ceremony coming up and they want to know when is it going to happen and what's going to, how is it going to work? Okay, let's get into it. History, like what is going on right now? Well, USCIS closed. Well, didn't really close. They stopped in-person services and just started focusing on emergent situations around March 18th. And then starting June 3rd is when the offices started slowly opening and things started happening. So there, from then they are already in doing in-person services now at the USCIS offices. Now remember, there's lots of USCIS offices across the United States. Not every single one of, them, one of them is exactly the same in their processes and procedures with reopening under COVID-19 restrictions. So just be aware that this is from this information is from USCIS in general, but you might have specific, specific information for the particular office you're going to attend an interview for or a biometrics to that might be on the actual notice that you receive. So make sure you read those very carefully because there might be other information that's specific, specific to that particular office. So this is just general. It's very detailed, but it is general for all of USCIS. 
And then just remember to keep note of the little things that might come out on notices that you'll receive when you get rescheduling. Okay, so let's talk about the basic rules that they've put into place when you're going to an interview or you're going to an O ceremony or going to a biometrics appointment now with USCIS. You must wear a face mask. Nobody will be let in to any USCIS office or a biometrics appointment without a face mask at all times, okay? Security is going to be one person at a time. We're not laying in, sometimes they would let in like a whole family at a time. Now it's one person at a time. And you must come only 15 minutes before your interview appointment. Before, sometimes people would show up, rightfully so, to be very careful, they'd show up two hours before just so they're there on time to relax, get ready. No more. They want you there not more than 15 minutes before your interview notice. If you're coming for an oath ceremony, you can come 30 minutes before, but not more than 30 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes if it's a regular interview, 30 minutes if you're coming for an oath ceremony. And you know the reason behind all this is because they're trying to limit the amount of people that are in these buildings. And they can only control that if people come when they're supposed to come or within a certain time frame of what their appointment is. So that's very important. You absolutely must have your appointment notice. So the notice that comes in, in the mail that says the time and date you have to be at USCS office, that needs to be in your hand when you go. You cannot go unless you have that with you. They're going to be very strict about that. There is no walk-ins. So you can't just show up at USCS and say, I need to go to the eighth floor um, to talk to so-and-so officer, or I forgot something and I need to come in. There's no walk-ins allowed during this period of time. Only the person that is there and that's necessary to be there for the appointment can come in. Don't bring your aunts and uncles and friends and siblings and everyone with you to the appointment. If someone drove you to the appointment, then they're gonna to have to come back and pick you up after the appointment. They only want the people or the person that is you know, critical to the actual interview, they're with you at the appointment and they will be asking you that security. So don't think you can bring in a few people and then they're gonna say, oh, whatever. So they're gonna look at your notice, see what you're there for and then figure out who is actually coming in under that notice and if there's people there that don't need to be there, they're not going to let them in. Okay. Interpreter can be available by phone if you need an interpreter. Um, they don't want them also there in person. They want the interpreters to be there telephonically over the phone. If you have an attorney, we can come with you or we can do it telephonically. So if you're going to have an attorney come with you, and that's fine. If you want to do it telephonically, when you get to your interview, you'll tell the officer that my attorney is going to come in or join us telephonically over the telephone. And then the officer will then connect with the attorney um, through the phone number that's on the G28. Okay. Bring your own pen. Okay. Never thought I'd say that, but bring your own pen, a black or blue pen, ballpoint pen to your appointment. They're trying to limit, obviously, the amount of people that are touching or the amount of you know, pens and so forth and sharing pens and, and not reducing the amount of time they have to sanitize things, basically. There is no penalty if you have to cancel if you're sick. So if you're not feeling well or you are sick, in fact, you should not go and you need to notify them of that case. And there will be no penalty if you, have to, if you can't go if you're sick. So that's something that they're being very strict about and they're being very lenient on because they do not want people feeling that they have to show up when they're not feeling well because of everything going on. And it's critical that you respect the time of your interview and the date because they are controlling the number of people coming in. Like I said, it protects the officers, it protects you, it protects the security in the building, it protects everybody to keep the amount of people that are coming in to a minimum and the only way they can control that flow is obviously through scheduling and everyone staying true and honest with their actual scheduling. Okay. Let's see. Have any symptoms. When you actually go to USCS's offices, unlike before, you'll be asked three questions. Three questions. You have to answer no to those questions or you will not be let in the, in the, in the office. Now, you're not supposed to answer no if the answer is yes but they're looking for three no answers. And the questions are, have any symptoms? Do you have any symptoms of a COVID-19, including cough, fever, you know, difficulty breathing? Do you have any symptoms at all of COVID-19? 
Have you been in close contact with anyone that possibly has COVID-19 in the last 14 days? Okay. And the last one is, have you been individually directed to self-quarantine or self-isolation by a healthcare provider or public official in the last 14 days? So the three questions are, do you feel sick? Have you been around someone else that could have COVID-19 and in the last 14 days? Or has someone told you you need to go into quarantine or self-isolation in the last 14 days? If you say no to all those questions, then there won't be an issue. If one of those questions is a yes, then you have to be honest and you should probably not go in and they probably will not let you in because it'll ask you to go ahead and reschedule. Okay, so those are the basic ground rules that they're actually following right now at USCS across the board. Very basic, but very important and some things that are not usual. So I'm glad that we're having this live chat so we can make sure that you guys have this information so you don't just show up three hours before your appointment and they're like, I'm sorry, you have to come back in two and a half hours from now or even more. Okay, so this is really important. Okay, let's get more into actually the interview section of what they talked about. Um, O ceremonies and natural naturalization interviews are taking first priority over everything. They've made it very clear that those are the priority right now. Not, don't get me wrong, not that they're not going to be doing other interviews for adjustment of statuses and so on and so forth, but they are actually putting as a priority all interviews and O ceremonies for naturalization applicants. Okay. The interviews will be rescheduled for everybody, including naturalization interviews and O ceremonies on a first come first for basis. Meaning if you were one of the first ones appointments to be canceled, you're going to be one of the first ones appointments to be rescheduled. So that's critical. So it, it's not like they're going to say, Oh, last in last out. So if, if I just got mine canceled two weeks ago, I'm not going to be the first one that gets rescheduled. They're going to go back to possibly, you know, middle of March when they shut their doors or they stop doing interviews and they're going to start rescheduling those with, again, the priority on the oath and naturalization interviews. There'll be no waiver of any adjustment interviews um, by rule. So during COVID-19, they were waiving or they were saying they were approving certain applications, mostly employment based applications for green cards for adjustment of status that were employment based. They were waiving the interview um, or for relative petitions, some relative positions between, let's say, uh, parent and child. They're waiving the interviews. There is no more waiving of interviews um, unless it's a case by case basis. There are going to be possibly some cases that they will actually waive the interview but not as a rule and not as often likely, I'm assuming not as often likely as they were during, during their closure period, okay? The interviews also may be on video. So that might look like something like this, that I might be as the attorney in one room on video, you as the client might be in another room on video, and then the officer might be in another room on video. So there might be video interviews where you're not in the same location, you're in different rooms conducting the interview, possibly in the same building. So it's going to be interesting, I have to say, it's going to be very interesting, but that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to separate everyone as much as they possibly can, but be efficient as they possibly can. So there might be interviews done through video and video where you're still in the same possible building, but just in different locations. Okay. Naturalization. Let's focus a little bit on just people that are naturalizing and what's going on with them with this opening of the offices. So O ceremonies are taking a priority. So if you had an O ceremony that was canceled, then you need to know that that is going to be a priority. Big, big, big is that officers, USCS officers are now authorized to do the swearing in for O ceremonies. So you would be doing the swearing in O ceremonies likely at the USCS offices by appointment. So obviously they're going to look very, very different than they did when you would do them before COVID-19, which is in large convention centers with thousands of people. Um, now it's going to be a more intimate kind of situation, which I guess we could all look at it in a positive way. That's kind of nice that you're going to have a more intimate type of O ceremony when you naturalize the United States. But trying to look at the positive side here, you know, work with me here. But the point is that they're going to have, the officers are now authorized to do those. 
And they're trying to do that is to be more efficient, to, to move the process forward a little quicker, because the main issue is that when you file for naturalization, well, I should say one of the main issues is that when you file for naturalization, you have to, you, you know, you have to qualify based on a lot, the number of days you were in the United States between the period of, of qualifying for naturalization. So if you turn in your application and you have your interview and it gets approved, but we can't have an oath ceremony for, let's say, nine months or a year or seven months. It's a lot of work for them to then, because they have to account for what you were doing during those seven months between the interview and when you were sworn in as a citizen of the United States. So it's a lot of time to track and it's a lot of, it could cause a lot more work and a lot more issues if they do it this way. So they rather just have the interview and then do the O ceremony almost immediately. Or if you were postponed your O ceremony, they want to get you in there and they want to get you um, sworn in and made a U.S. citizen ASAP. So we don't have more time and more paperwork and more delays between when you had your interview and when you're actually sworn into the United States and you are officially a U.S. citizen. Because until you're sworn in, remember, you are not a U.S. citizen in the United States. You are still a permanent resident. So until that day that you raise your hand and you swear um, and you take the oath to the United States, you are still a permanent resident. Okay. Another difference with the oath ceremonies and with naturalization is there's no guests involved. You can't bring, unfortunately, guests to your oath ceremony. I know for a lot of people, it's really an important, important day, but you cannot, um, you can't bring anybody with you. It's going to be just you. So take pictures if they allow pictures, um, but they're not going to allow guests involved. The O ceremony will be a lot shorter, a lot shorter than it is normally when you go or you've been, if you've ever been to one of the O ceremonies in the huge convention centers, it's going to be a lot shorter, which in a way is a very good thing. Um, and there'll be no videos or anything like they usually are at the big O ceremonies. They're going to give you a flyer or something that you're going to take with you that's going to have links that direct you to the USCS website that you can then um, look at those information, the videos and anything else you need to know that you didn't get at the O ceremony because of the difference and the changes that are going on. So it'll look different. It'll feel different, but it's still accomplishing the same goal. And the, and the important part, in my opinion, is that it's more efficient, quicker, and it will get you what you really need you know, faster instead of waiting and waiting and waiting. And we have an election coming up. So it would be great if we can get as many people naturalized as possible so they can participate in the election, which is a good thing. Okay. Let's now talk a little bit about fingerprints and biometrics appointments. Um, a lot of you are familiar or even know because you have an appointment that you've received and was canceled that most of our applications or a lot of applications require fingerprints a photo, biometrics taken. Now, during this period of time, all that was shut down. There was none happening at all. Um, now they are slowly, slowly opening those back up. Now, the ASC offices, um, which are the ones that control the biometrics, every state has different rules of what they need to do with having dividers between people and, and how many people in the room and so on and so forth. So um, it all depends. Each of those offices will have to defer to their stay-at-home orders of their particular state or county. So you, again, you might get different information in a letter that you receive when you get your rescheduling of your appointment. But this is basically what I'm going to give you now is going to be for everyone more or less across the board. Masks required, of course. Um, they will start, begin rescheduling July 13th. So expect if your appointment was canceled that you're probably going to get a notice. And again, it's first come first serve. So it's, if your appointment was canceled a long time ago, likely you're going to get the first reschedulings. Um, but you're going to have to remember that um, there you're probably going to get the new appointments towards the end of June, probably the next week, because we're at the 19th of June and there are starting appointments July 13th. So within the next week or so, you're going to start seeing more rescheduled appointments coming through. So be aware of that. Be open to it. Make sure you're looking for it, especially if your appointment is already canceled so you can get them done and start, you know, keep your process moving to completion. Do not, I repeat, do not just show up at an ASC center, application center. 
because before COVID-19, if you had an appointment, you could, if you couldn't make the day and time of the appointment on your, on your actual notice, then you could actually come a time after that. Like you can show up a week later and have your notice and they would let you in and you could take care of it. No more. You, you really, they are only taking people with the actual date and time on the actual notice. So don't just show up because you had an appointment and you're like, well, I had an appointment was canceled, but I know you're taking appointments now. So I'm just going to show up. It won't work. They won't let you in. Also, you can't get an appointment and then, oh, whoops, I was out of the country or I was in another state and I couldn't get back in time. So now I will just go when I get back like I did before on other times. It doesn't work. Um, they won't let you do that. You have to go the date and time they request. And if you can't, then you have to notify them and reschedule for another appointment. Okay. Again, this is a phased in approach. Um, the whole rescheduling of fingerprint appointments state by state, again, based on the stay at home orders of each state. Fingerprints are less than a year old. If your fingerprints are less than a year old and you're applying for 765, which is a work authorization application, then they're likely not going to require new fingerprints, which is good news. Okay. Only take people on the day and time of interview notice. They're not going to take anyone else, just like I just said. I'm just following my notes, making sure that I didn't miss anything. There's one thing that they will be doing different. It's a pretty big change is when you used to go for your biometrics appointment, there was like a worksheet that you had to fill out there and they would give you a clipboard and they would tell you to fill it out. That worksheet is now going to be sent with the actual appointment notices. So you're going to fill it out at home and you're going to bring it in. And filling it out at home is very important. Make sure you do it. It's not necessarily online. They said that they have not put it online, the form. It's going to be a paper form that's going to come with your actual notice. So you have to fill it out likely by hand and bring it with you to your appointment. They're doing that clearly to avoid having to sanitize, you know, clipboards and pens and so on and so forth. And people that did not have a pen with them, you know, it, it just becomes more work and more risk of transmitting COVID-19 um, in these situations. So they're going to be sending this worksheet home with the notice for your interview. So make sure you take care of that before you go to your interview notice, to, before you go to your actual biometrics appointment. They will require you to take off your face covering for identification purposes when you arrive. So make sure that you are understanding of that. It's a security measure. Um, if you don't feel comfortable, then you're going to just have to reschedule your appointment until a time when you will feel comfortable doing that or a time, hopefully, in the near future that we don't have to wear masks to do anything. But at this point, you will have to remove your mask to, to identify yourself at one point during the uh, biometrics appointment. Okay. Um, that is most of the changes. This is not a huge amount of information on the end of wanting to get you as much as I can. There are many, many changes coming clearly as this evolves. They made it clear that this is our first round of changes that are going to happen. This is critically important to everybody that is going to USCS offices that are going to fingerprint biometric appointments at ASC offices. It is critical that you know this information. For me, the most important things that you can take away from this is that you must not be there too early to your appointments. Make sure 15 minutes before, if it's a regular interview, or 30 minutes at the most, if it's an oath ceremony that you're attending. Do not bring a lot of guests. Make sure that you bring your own pen. OK, make sure that you don't just show up anywhere. Everything is based on the appointments that you get in the mail. Now, you can't kind of wiggle around um, your times anymore, especially for the biometrics appointments, which is very unfortunate because for a long time I've had clients that haven't been able to make an appointment. It was very easy for them just to go the next week or the next month. I mean, whenever it was convenient for them. So you can't do that anymore. We have to follow what the interview notice says. The date and time is critical to follow. Okay, please. I hope this was informational. I hope you took notes and I hope it was good information that you can use when you're going to your next appointment or you have or you're waiting you know, patiently or anxiously for your rescheduling of your appointment to get it moving forward. The naturalization ones you should be seeing in the next few weeks. Hopefully, they're going to start coming through. Rescheduling naturalization interviews. Hopefully, O ceremonies are coming even before that. 
And then again, natural, I mean, sorry, adjustment of status interviews for employment, for family, and it, everything's going to start moving. We just need to be a little bit patient. But I think that I have to tell you that during this whole period of COVID-19, USCIS has been really working pretty, I have to say, kind of quickly, I have to admit, on a lot of applications that were sitting there that didn't need interviews. So they've been approving I-130 relative petitions. They've been approving a lot of applications that have been sitting there, I-129s for all types of work visas. They have not stopped working during this whole period. The only thing that this is dealing with really is the reopening of the in-person services, not the services across the board for USCIS. Okay. I hope this video was really helpful. I hope it gave you some good information. Please, like I said, I see there's a couple questions here and I would love to answer them, but I think the best thing to do really is to put those questions below this video once it is published instead of on the side. Because like I said, once this video gets published, I lose access to those comments on the side. I can't really comment back to them. And I please, I would love to answer any questions that you have and also clarify. And if any of you out there have had any stories in the coming weeks when you're going to USCS offices, it would be wonderful if you could put comments below on your experiences, maybe in different offices across the US. That'll be really, really helpful for other people that are anticipating going to those offices to give them some insight into particular offices across the United States, which every single one is completely different when it comes to the little minute details of what they require. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you enjoyed the video and it gave you some good information. Hit that like button. And again, leave me lots and lots of comments. Always happy to answer lots and lots of comments. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful morning wherever you are in the world and look forward to seeing you all next time.